you don't have to have four legs to appreciate the beauty of a lush paddock of Lucina. Six legs will do just nicely, and since the 1980s, this little pain in the neck known as the psyllid has devastated Lucina in the tropics around the globe. It's a small sap-sucking bug, about two millimetres uh, in size when it's an adult, and it arrived in Australia in 1986. And it is a particular problem in humid environments where the annual rainfall is over about 800 millimetres. And since it's pretty much a high rainfall plant, that makes for a very restricted growing zone and a massive loss of potential productivity for beef producers and the beef industry. There's a belt between 600 and 800 millimetres of rainfall where over 90% of the lacuna is grown in Queensland. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is no resistance to psyllids in the lacuna species grown for pasture, but the MLA-funded breeding project here at the University of Queensland has managed to bring resistance across from another species of lacuna. We have um, now generated plant material that's about 92 or 3 per cent um, lucina leucocephala in our back cross program and that's the material we're about to plant in the field now and evaluate and because it's um, su got such a high content of lucina leucocephala in it it's likely to be very genetically stable and ready for release. But not in a hurry, each new generation takes 18 months. I would hope that seed would be available uh, for the cattlemen in about 2011 We'll hopefully finish breeding it next year and uh, then it's a process of actually delivering seed to commercial seed producers in Queensland, getting them to grow it on, bulk up seed so we've got tonne quantities in the shed that can be sold to, to um, producers. One beef producer who's practically counting the sleeps until the new varieties are available is MLA Chairman Don Heatley. He's been grazing irrigated lacuna in North Queensland for about seven years and as you might imagine, psyllids are one of his pet hates. Some years you'll have very low infestation. The next year it could be quite heavy and you might have a couple of months where they really bother you. So, you know, you'll probably lose a month, you know, on average, just where you don't have the quality of feed in front of the, uh, in front of the livestock. Even with that handicap, Lacuna has utterly transformed the Heatley family's operation. You know, broadly speaking, we've halved our age of turnoff. I mean, we've got other properties where we've got grass-fed bullocks coming out of those, and they're that sort of three, three and a half years old. These cattle here, uh, we're doing them now um, at about sort of 22 months of age thereabouts. Um, milk to four teeth is the maximum. We've got a lot of cattle, milk teeth and two teeth now, and they're, they're dressing out at that sort of that Japox 290, 300 kgs or better. So it's, it's a very, very productive system in that regard. For those who have been involved, particularly in dryland lacina, which, lacina, which is uh, where the bulk of the pasture lies in Queensland, particularly in the central Queensland area, um, I mean, the gains to the industry as a whole have been enormous. And with psyllid resistant lacina, the gains will push beyond the current narrow band where lacina can grow. Well, that's an exciting prospect. It does present a bit of a challenge. Lacina has the potential to be an environmental pest. Now, the industry keeps that under control through a code of practice. But as Lacina goes into whole new areas, that code of practice is going to have to go along with it. Ensuring that happens will be the role of the Lacina Growers Group, known as the Lacina Network. If you adhere to a code of practice, which the network, has, the Lacina Network has in place, then you're not going to see the spread of, uh, of, of plant outside its boundaries. So it's, uh, it's important to be involved and understand, but it's, uh, it's an exciting prospect, this, this new variety. And I, I would encourage anybody who possibly can or thinking about becoming involved in growing lacina or wants to understand the basics is to become a member. It's, it's very, very cheap and there's a mountain of information. And the best part about the information is it's, it's it's free in the sense that people like myself and others, have, you know, we've, we've made the mistakes and we're, we're willing to talk about it. So that's a great advantage in itself. In fact, it was via the Lacina network that producers initiated MLA's investment in the breeding program, an investment of $620,000 that now seems certain to yield a massive return. <laughs>